promised to keep You know that life is really just what you want it to be It's sad to say that ideas no common belief I'm feeling like a king rising with common dreams But quite a lonely view when you What is up guys, it's your boy Jesse So I quickly wanted to add this video uh, before the actual video So the video you guys are about to see is actually um, A video that I recorded probably about a month ago um, unfortunately, right after I recorded those videos, uh, I went on vacation, or I went on two vacations. Um, one was for a week or so. Uh, it was here in the States, and the Airbnb where we were staying, uh, fortunately, it did not have that great of internet, so either way, if I would have uh, edited the videos, it wouldn't have been able to upload there. And then shortly after, I literally came home for one day, and then I literally left Mexico the next day, um, and I was there for over a week as well. So things haven't lined up but um the video you guys are about to see is a little uh old but i do want to mention that we haven't been slacking behind the scenes by any means so i'm gonna go ahead and show you what we've been doing uh besides what the video that you guys are about to see i just want to quickly give you guys this little glimpse because i don't want you guys thinking that we're over here slagging because we're not uh we're making moves but it's hard to record myself uh doing things when uh, i'm the only one here so I don't want to be doing like one thing, taking off one bolt and then recording myself taking off that one bolt. So that's why I'm like, uh, I do it in little parts. Like I'll do uh, a little section of work and then I'll go ahead and grab the camera and then I'll do another little section of work and I'll do it and then I'll grab the camera. If I have the ability to do like a little time lapse, I usually do, but uh, in the way that the cars are set up right now, I can't really do that because they're straight in the sun. So I'm gonna quickly give you guys a little glimpse of what we've been doing. Um, so here, um, Let's see, let's start with the cars. So here is Lexi, and uh, we don't really have a name for this IS300. Um, Big Red, I guess. We'll call her Big Red for right now. Um, so Big Red is right there, Lexi's right here. So Lexi, if you guys don't know, this is our 2001, 2001? Uh, this is our 2001 Lexus IS300, it's an automatic. Um, they only came in automatic in 01. And unfortunately, the car had a blown, uh, blown motor. If you guys don't know, uh, we picked that up as a trade. We traded a BMW that was a bucket for that car. Um, it was still worth more than the BMW. So, oh well, the BMW cost like 600 bucks and we traded it for that shit. So, yeah. But we will be making a video of how much we paid for each individual IS300. I don't know if it was the car, the BMW was exactly 600, but it was around that range. But we're going to be making a video of how much we paid for each individual IS300 because if you guys don't know, we have three uh, factory W55 IS300s and then we have one uh, automatic IS300, which is this one. So we're going to be including a video or we're going to be making a video uh, whenever Gus is out here and we're going to explain how much we paid for each individual car. Uh, Gus was the one who originally started the IS300 movement. Um, but, but yeah, so the great car had a blown motor and then the the red car had a had a good motor so what we have here is um this this is the motor from the red car and this is the automatic transmission from the gray car so what we did is just take the motor and tranny and separated both sets so this is the motor that came out of uh this car here but that motor has like no compression um when it turns over you can hear that it has no compression so the head the head gas could have blown a piston could be shit i don't know but but for right now, um, that's what we've been doing. Um, so, so the red IS300 motor is connected to the automatic transmission from the silver car. And we're gonna go ahead and put that in the silver car and basically get rid of that car. We have absolutely no use for that car. This is phase one. We're gonna make, uh, we're gonna make that car, this car, a runner and it's gonna get sold. And then phase two, I don't wanna give too much uh, detail, but we're gonna be fixing this car as well. Um, if you guys don't know, that car was involved in an accident where a cop sideswiped it uh, while it was parked on the side of the street. Late at night, he had his lights on and a cop just came by and swipe swiped it. Um, luckily for the owner who had that car, um, it got paid off in a settlement with the police department. Um, and then we bought it off him for like a steal, so. Like I said, we're gonna be making a video of how much we paid for each individual car, but that's all I wanted to basically give you guys is this little update where um, that motor is from the red car, and then this is the transmission from the automatic car. The reason I'm even publishing this video is just to let you guys know that uh, I'm always working on my cars. These shits are, especially my BMW, that shit's a bucket. But there's a reason why it's a bucket. I mean, 
if you guys don't know I bought that car for six hundred dollars and I mean obviously now I probably have a lot more in it but <clears throat> the 346 helped that car out because the 346 became a parts car for the 330 so it ended up eh, it ended up playing out but I ended up selling the 346 I no longer have that car uh, I literally sold it to a junkyard because it was just taking up space on my house uh, people were trying to buy like the trunk they were trying to buy like a uh, the the back window from the door not the not the whole door just the little ass window from the back door so i'm like it was a waste of time so i just i just scrapped it they gave me like 200 bucks so i was like bet but yeah guys that's a little update that's something you guys can look forward to uh, i re i already recorded uh the process to getting to this point please look forward to stuff with the cadillac um i still haven't forgotten about it um the way things have been playing out lately uh, i haven't had any time to actually touch the car or have it taken to anywhere where they could uh, make things happen so uh, things are definitely gonna be happening with the, the Cadillac but just just bear with me um, I'm definitely gonna be making things happen with this car I have huge expectations for this car although it's pretty much let me down every single time that I've uh, kind of put money into it so that kind of sucks but I'm gonna be making something happen with that um, and hopefully we can hit that 350 wheel horsepower range um, that's what I'm hoping for and if we hit and if we do e85 um, hopefully it can make 400 uh, but for right now um, priority is this this is gonna be able to fund a lot of stuff because just the ice just the automatic ice is just gonna bring us some money into our pockets and then we're gonna be able to put that money into the red 300 and then we can put that money into something else so just look forward to both mine and I's, mine and Gus's eyes. We're going to be making something happen with that. But but yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for checking in and enjoy the video. What is up, guys? It's your boy, Jesse. Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, so I hope you guys are all having a great morning. Um, unfortunately, me, uh, not so much. Last night, uh, I was actually driving my BMW home from work. And uh, I noticed my battery light came on and I quickly pulled over just to check if I still had my serpentine belt on and I did um, I just kept driving because I didn't want to really stop there because I knew I knew what the battery the battery light meant, meant. Um, it either meant there was uh, my battery was either shot or the alternator itself was not charging the car sufficiently enough uh, to be able to uh, continue on so uh, I kept going and the car started getting worse and worse. Um, I ended up getting a transmission light on the cluster and it put me into basically like transmission limp mode, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it makes you uh, not have first and second. So you're only using third through fifth. And unfortunately, uh, after some time, I drove it like 40 minutes like that. I kept my eye on the needle for the temperature gauge and I didn't see that rise at all until uh, I started getting into the mountains, uh, the mountainy area where I have to like start uh, going at elevation and shit. So once I started doing that, I noticed my, uh, the needle on the actual car start rising and it, and it got to the three quarter mark. And as soon as I saw that, I quickly just got off. On, like I just pulled over off the freeway because it was stop and go traffic. If the car would have, I mean, if, yeah, if the car would have been on a, in a moving pace, I would have made it home. But there was like three hours worth of traffic last night and it was ridiculous. So I had to leave the car there. Um, I actually had my baby mama bring me a battery just to see if the battery was bad. And the car turned it on perfectly fine, but it, the, the accessories were no longer working. Uh, like a lot of the accessories were no, no longer working. So, I mean, by that I mean like the, uh, the cigarette lighter didn't work. Um, I didn't have power to my fan. I don't know if that's associated with that. Or my fan might have given out too since it was getting little to no electricity so I kind of have the camera a little low cuz uh, I have no tin on this truck so it's literally like being in a fishbowl so so yeah I'm literally driving the 6.0 uh, it's actually good that I'm in here because uh, this, this gives me the chance to announce that uh, we're gonna be doing a little build series on the 6.0 so we're gonna be basically doing it uh, we're aiming to build uh, a bulletproof 6.0 uh, we're not going to be touching uh, the like the motor internally yet. Um, if the head does lift one day and it causes the head gasket to, to like uh, blow out, that's when I'll go ahead and do that. But for right now, uh, we're going to keep the motor stock, um, and then later on we'll see what happens. But for right now, I'm pulling up to my car. 
Um, I'm driving with the U-Haul on it. I don't want to AAA it, so I just uh, left it on the side of the freeway. Let me see if I can get a shot of it. There it goes on the other side of the freeway. There it goes. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly just pull off the freeway uh, and then I'll go ahead and uh, let you guys see as I pull the car on. The car should turn on, no problem. Just I don't have a fan, I don't have a fan, so I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna let it run for long. Let's go, let's go give the car a visual before I start fucking loading it up. So it looks like the car got rained on a little bit. Let's see, it was definitely here. Uh, but yeah, it looks, looks good. Doesn't look like no one messed with it. I'll go ahead and start loading it on. I mean, is it really gonna go anywhere though? <laughs> I'm gonna fucking leave it like that and go for it. All right guys, the car is officially on the trailer. I'm gonna go ahead and start going home. Um, I got like a 20, uh, I got like a 30, 40 minute drive home. And then I'll go ahead and uh, give you guys an update as to what the hell I find. So I've gone ahead and I already uh, actually multimetered the car. And I'm pretty sure I came to the conclusion that the car is uh, suffering from a bad alternator. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys that the the car's voltage is low. So I don't have AC, so if not, I would run it. But um, go ahead and turn on the lights. Um, I'll turn on the radio too. Fuck it. Um, I mean, I'll turn it on, but it's not gonna do shit. whatever that's doing but I'll go ahead and check the hood now so this is gonna be a little hard checking with uh, one hand but I'll make it happen just put it there turn it sit on alright alright guys so there you guys can see um, I could do this a little better but there you go I mean it's reading it um, it's not even charging it to 11 volts so the car is definitely um, slacking uh, the alternator of charging it it should be in the 13s literally just last week I had just checked it and it was at 13 and I was like oh man I'm, I'm so happy that it's working good and then this happens yesterday and I was fucking pissed Let's see if I could do it a little better nope that's the best it's gonna get 10 a3 10 a7 there you go it just bounces around since uh the actual last clip i went ahead and just got the whole radiator out um i mean not the radiator i went ahead and got it the whole like radiator fan out and then uh i got the alternator out itself so in all honesty this issue could have been uh an issue since the very beginning because so when i first got the car it came with the bosch uh alternator and that's what should go on a 330i it's a two pin um, alternator and the one that i took off was the one that was actually from the 323i and since i did that um that car uses a three pin alternator i believe and well i don't know if that can honestly be the issue why that was happening but um i went ahead and just went to the junkyard and they actually had a two pin alternator for me and it was 50 bucks seems to be like the brand new like like an oem bmw uh alternator which could be a good or bad thing because this thing could have like a bunch of miles and it could be old as hell but um it looks pretty good um i checked it out and it looked all right um it still has the power wire sorry still has a power wire on it so i'm gonna go ahead and just loosen this up just gotta take the 17 off and then i'll take a take off the power wire and then i could literally put it back in there um but yeah guys hopefully this fixes the issue um like you guys saw in the video i was getting 11 volts with the lights on and stuff and the car should definitely be having like 13 or so so hopefully this one uh does the job um it's kind of dirty compared to the other one that i had i think it was a little dirtier this one's a little dirtier but i mean it seems good it spins good 
Um, I don't really know how to tell if this is good or not. I feel like the only way you could really tell is like if it's in the car, but I don't know how it works. I mean, it, I hear I hear like a noise already, and that kind of freaks me out because I don't like hearing noises in my engine bay. Like you guys hear that? Hopefully, it's good. Hopefully, it's good. So in order to get the alternator in and out, um, since I have this eBay colder insert. Um, I just had to do some one of the hose clamps and I went ahead and did this um, and then I just basically turned it out of the way some and then uh, the alternator should fit through that crevice right there um, you just set it into that little um, like that little air duct right there and you just basically put it onto this I don't know what you would call it but this is what alternator sits it goes on either or it goes on the back front and back and yeah, I mean, there's only two bolts holding it, two 16s, and the 16 that goes to the power wire, and that's it, pretty much. All right, guys, the car is done. Um, I'm just got to put the fan in, the electric fan, um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, measuring the bolts in the rear uh, on the battery before I connect the battery, and then I'll go ahead and start the car, uh, put the battery, put the lights on, or turn on the lights, and I mean, I can't turn on the AC, so. But it's not in there, so I can't really turn it on. But um, I'll just go ahead and turn on the lights and turn it on once I do the voltmeter check in the back. So I couldn't really get any time lapses because, unfortunately, uh, there is a couple engines on the ground. So I couldn't pull the car in, and it didn't allow me to um, basically get the car in here. So um, you guys can see um, there's. There's a 2J right there, there's a 2J right here, there's another 2J right there. Um, the garage is currently occupied with a couple 2Js and I couldn't pull it in so I couldn't do any time lapses but um, the car is complete. Let me go ahead and show you guys. You guys are probably going to hear a lot of wind. Uh, I couldn't really do a time lapse, time lapse out here because I couldn't get uh, like a good point of view. Uh, it was just hard but I got everything on there. There's the brand new alternator. I mean, it's brand new shit probably has more miles in this car but um it's there i'm gonna go ahead and just check the oil uh check the water again probably put a little bit more water in there and then i'm gonna go ahead and do the voltmeter check on the rear um by that i mean i'm gonna disconnect the all the terminals off the battery i'm gonna make sure the battery is good and then i'm gonna go ahead and turn on the car give it load by that i mean turn on the lights and then after it has a little bit of load on it i'll go ahead and, uh, and check the voltage again and hopefully it's within the 13.8 range so that the car is running good again because if you guys saw the car was running with a voltage of 11 which meant uh, all the systems weren't getting the proper proper electrical current that they need and that's why it started just giving me issues but I think the fan still works so I'm pretty uh, happy about that I totally forgot to connect the two connectors that go on the fan so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now off the camera all right guys so here we are behind the car i got the voltmeter right here um so this was the battery that was in the car and um whenever my girlfriend picked me up i actually ended up switching over to this battery uh this battery's a little smaller than this bat than this battery but um kind of the same um this is the spec on this battery let's see if i can get it to focus these are the specs on this battery and these are the specs for this battery so um it isn't all that different uh the sizing is a little bit smaller on this one but um they both turn on the car exactly the same but right now um, i'm gonna go ahead and test this one see if the battery is still good because it was running on solely like the battery i guess because the alternator wasn't doing doing its job so it might be a little low um i'll go ahead and let's see if that works sure wrong side So as you guys can see, the battery currently has 10.99495. So um, I think that's a little low. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the charger and see if it goes up some. Let me go ahead and check the one that's on the car right now. And this one reads 11.9. So I think this battery is good right now. Um, it should allow me to start the car and check if the car is running right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just connect the battery and check if the car is gonna stop misbehaving let me see if i can move the battery there you go 
go. There is this one. Oh, sorry. There is this one. Um, I want to take this shit off because I'm kind of scared that I'm not seeing the subframe or like the the mounting points for the actual like uh, shock. So I want to see the shock towers are basically good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off one day. For right now it's chilling. So I just connected the battery. As you guys can see, we have power. Um, I'm just tying these down. Oh, well, I mean, I probably shouldn't if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna like try the other one. Holy shit! I just arced this shit out. Whoops! <laughs> Whoops! I almost died right now. So my my dad just got more parts for the 6.0. Unfortunately, um, the our UPS drivers around here are kind of on some shit, <laughs> and my last one got bent. But um we'll go ahead and uh check this one out and see if it's good i mean it's not a hopeful sign that the bottom of the box is open but hopefully um i haven't done a video for that truck yet because we're still waiting on parts uh but pretty much all the shit is here except two things which are one of them is pretty significant the other one is just like a accessory i guess but We'll go ahead and make a video as soon as we get that and uh, I will be making like some videos about that I, like I'm not gonna be making like how to's or anything because I mean there's plenty of guys out there who are uh, making videos about that um, and uh, I know diesel tech Ron he used to make excellent videos so I don't even want to touch base on that like I'm not gonna make no how to's or nothing it's just gonna be how uh, my experience is installing those parts and i'll be making videos showing little clips here and there about those and then i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little clip of the 6.0 before and after to see how how good it sounds because it's gonna it's gonna be nice at the end of it it's she's pretty much stock she has a canine uh colder intake and then she has just a programmer on it but it has it has no tune on it because like i said i don't want to i don't want to bust the heads on that just yet but it i will eventually so here we are behind the wheel so the moment of truth let's see if uh, i fixed it or it's still a piece of shit uh, definitely don't need ac definitely don't need the lights on or just yet oh i'm still gonna have to check the voltage i forgot Fuck. please go away oh that's a good sign that's a good sign what the fuck? It says I got a fucking light out. What the fuck? Since when? Bitch, where? Oh, I got a check engine light. Fucking sick. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the scanner and check that code. Um, car never had a check engine light before. The fucking, that light wasn't on before either. So don't know what's going on with that, but I'll go ahead and, um, check the code and then i'll let you guys see the code but we'll see what it is ah fuck i totally dicked you guys uh the code said uh circuit something o2 sensor activity circuit one bank one some shit like that um i just deleted the code i don't i've never seen that code before i don't think uh, all of a sudden that code is gonna come back on or come on for whatever reason um but i have the scanner on it right now and um let's see but stores as a pending so far so bueno uh yeah i mean i got that light to come off um for the for the freaking uh light um it says i'm low on cooling because i opened up the bleeder valve because i wanted to bleed it because after it got hot as shit yesterday i'm sure it had like a bubble in there so i want to go i went to go open it but it just started pissing out all the coolant not pissing it out but it just uh it started coming up like i don't think that means a bad head gasket but what do I know? Um, like, it, it could have a bubble in the bottom, I'm assuming. I don't know how that works, but... I mean, I'm gonna drive it. If it starts smoking and shit, it start, starts acting like a piece of shit. Um, I'll go ahead and check that, but I mean, the coolant was where the coolant should go. Or, I mean, the water was short. The water was where it should go, and the oil was where it should go. So, I mean, I'm not really, like, worried about it, but I'm gonna go ahead and top it off after I get it... Um, like up to temperature i want to make sure that everything is working um so my fan works now that's fucking sick you guys hear that shit it sounds like a tornado but everything is good there's my auto 
Dante and put it in work. So, it seems like the problem has been fixed, um, which is great. Uh, this by far has been the, car, the most unreliable car. Uh, and then that one follows. That one has been a man. Like, stop being such a piece of shit. But, um, but yeah, it seems like I fixed this one, so. Uh, I ended up getting that alternator for 50 bucks with the core charge, so that was way better. I was gonna spend well over 300 bucks on the on a brand new one, so I mean, fuck it, I don't care if I don't have this car for much longer. Hopefully, it's reliable to the next owner. I mean, I've been doing everything that it requires, and I, it's just eh. If it was something, if it was a car that I truly, truly loved about, I would be obviously putting brand new parts in this. But since I don't really care about this car, um, I don't mind putting in some old parts because it is what it is. Got to keep it in a budget, you know. So something I wanted to test was the current to see if, uh, like, it changed if I turned it on and I put the lights on. So let me go ahead and turn on the lights. Testing the rules for recurring marketing. So I could, I can instantly hear a dip in the voltage. So hopefully it's good. What a money making career and fitness is a personal trainer there's a massive need for personal trainers and gyms are so you guys can see it's definitely running uh 13.7 i think that's good i think it said like 13.7 or 13.8 so hopefully that's good i'm gonna go ahead and check that in the front and see if it's a little different near the the front of the motor i don't know that would make a difference but the, to get started for free text the word but the car is not overheating you guys can see that you plan so that's good you plan the grocery list Check it right here. Let me see how I'm gonna do this. It says 13.9 over here by the motor. This is going off directly the strap that goes to the starter, I think. If I'm not mistaken, or this goes, they meet somewhere. I think it goes to the starter, then it goes to the alternator, some shit like that. But if, as you guys can see, it's running 13.9. So um, the, issue, the issue definitely got resolved. That gives a clear indication that the car is uh, fixed and yeah, all is well. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just chill now that the car is uh, working. Yeah guys, thank you so much for checking this video out and catch you in the next one.